Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today we are taking a look at the POP2 3D Scanner by Revopoint. This portable 3D scanner claims a precision of 50 microns, can be used both handheld or with a turntable, and even has a mobile app and Wi-Fi connections for on-the-go scanning. The POP2 had an extremely successful Kickstarter at the end of last year, raising over 2.8 million US dollars. So let's give it a try and see how it compares with its predecessor, the original POP 3D Scanner. Before we begin, this POP2 3D Scanner was sent to me for review by Revopoint. They aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this scanner for the last month. So let's get into it. The POP2 3D Scanner is an infrared scanner boasting a precision of 0.05 millimeters. It is a binocular microstructured light scanner, meaning that it has an infrared projector in the center of the scanner, shining a pattern onto the object. That pattern is then detected by the two infrared sensors on the side, which is then used to calculate depth information. By moving the scanner around the object, or by moving the object in front of the scanner, the software builds up a full three-dimensional model. And the POP2 has an RGB sensor which captures color information, meaning you can get full color texture of the object as well. The POP2 scanner connects using a single USB 3 cable, either to a computer or a mobile phone. That single cable makes the POP2 easy to work with. And that's right, this scanner can be used with their mobile app to scan on the go. It can connect to a phone using the USB cable, or host a Wi-Fi network which your phone can connect to. So your phone doesn't need a USB-C port in order to use this scanner. The POP2 uses RevoScan software, for Windows, Macs, Android, and iOS. When you start a new scan, you can select one of six scanning modes. Feature mode detects features on the object and tracks how those features move between frames. This is the general purpose mode. Marker mode looks for how marker dots move between the frames, useful for scanning objects which have no distinguishable features. Face, head, and body modes are useful for scanning people and pets. Face gets a high resolution facial features, but doesn't detect hair well. Head works better at handling hair, useful for full head scans. And body is designed for full body scans, and also works well on pets with darker spots. Finally, there's a dedicated dark mode. By default, the POP2 scanner ignores black areas, so any black parts of an object are just not detected, like the eyes and shoes of this Vault Boy figure. Dark mode tries to make up for that, so you can scan darker objects. The POP2 scans at 10 frames per second, which is a boost from the 8 frames per second of the original. That is quick enough to where I can move the scanner at a decent pace without it losing track. And when it did lose track, it was quickly able to resume where it left off when I moved back. RevoScan has a good user experience. It stores a list of all of your past projects, which you can then open and resume working with. And once you've finished a scan, the app handles turning the point cloud into a mesh, filling any holes, and stitching together the textures for colored scans. Then you can export the data as a PLY, OBJ, or STL file. The software also has a bulk processing mode, so you can capture a series of scans quickly and then process them all when you have the time. The POP2 comes in a standard package and a premium package. The standard package will get you the POP2 scanner and detachable tripod, which can extend, a quick connect mount, phone holder, calibration board, black sheets, markers, glue tack, a sample sculpture, and USB-A and USB-C cables. The premium package adds on a very nice carrying case, a 4000 mAh power bank, and a portable turntable that is powered via USB. The power bank allows for longer scans while on the go, and the turntable makes scanning smaller objects much more convenient. I found the scanning process extremely simple, and it's the same process whether you are on a computer or mobile device. Connect the scanner, select the mode, point the scanner at what you want to scan, and press start. As the object moves in front of the scanner, you get a great visualization of what areas you have already scanned. The scanner can only capture areas it can see, so often you'll need to scan an object a couple of times from a few different angles. That's easily done by stopping the scan, moving the object, and pressing start again. The software will recognize common features and continue right where it left off. Once you are happy with the scan, you can turn the point cloud into a mesh by using the mesh tool that will also fill any holes. Finally, if you are doing a colored scan, the texture tool will smooth out the surface textures. So let's take a look at a few scans with the POP2 3D scanner. First up, the sample sculpture included with the kits. It captured the details of the hairs and ears very well, and the turntable made it very easy to scan all of the sides. Next up, something a little more challenging. This 3D printed Kerbal is a very difficult object to scan, due to the head blocking the back of the helmet, 
and the dark paints of the insides of the helmets, mouth, and hair. Using the texture mode, I am quite impressed with how the POP2 handled it. As expected, it doesn't know how the inside of the helmet should work because you cannot see back there, and the mouth and hair are non-existent due to it being black. But the texture detail is pretty incredible. This 3D printed dragon is even more of a challenge. It is a very complex shape, with lots of thin edges of the wings and tail. It took a number of attempts to complete the scan, and even then it couldn't quite capture some of the wings. But overall, it captured the details of the throat and the head pretty well. This rubber duck was extremely easy to scan. The colors of the final scan are spot on, and it even captured the bottom embossing. I took the final scan and 3D printed a copy. Don't worry about the color of the 3D prints. I used a half yellow, half blue filaments that I thought might look pretty cool, but it ended up mixing into a very strange green. But dimensionally, the prince is a dimensionally accurate replica. I didn't have to do any resizing or scaling myself. This is the size straight from the POP2 scanner. The last figurine is this Fault Boy. As noted before, the black shoes and eyes weren't picked up by the scanner in the normal feature mode, but the details of the head and the body are very impressive. So let's scan something a little more technical. This Stadia game controller. The black buttons and triggers posed a problem but the scan of the controller body is nice and smooth. That would be useful for getting a base model to design accessories like controller holders or chargers. Let's see how well face and head scanning works. I scanned myself using the extending tripod to carefully move the scanner around my head. In face mode, it did not handle my facial hair at all, but switching to head mode worked very well at capturing my hair and goatee. Just ignore the bags under my eyes from long nights playing around with the scanner. I managed to catch my dog, Jack, sleeping, so I used the mobile app in body scan mode to capture this scan. It did an absolutely incredible job. The textures are spot on, even though I was scanning in a low light room. And the underlying mesh is also incredibly smooth, yet detailed. I was very impressed with all of the scans that I captured and I'm sure with a little more practice, even this challenging scans would become easier and easier. Before we end, let's compare the POP2 with the original POP 3D scanner. On paper, the POP2 seems like a solid upgrade, so I scanned the sculpture with both the original POP and POP2. Same software, same scanning setup, same orientations. Viewed side by side, with the POP2 on the left and the original POP on the right, at first, they look very similar. It's only when you really look close do you start to notice the differences. The lips have slightly more detail on the POP2, and the whiffs of hair on the back are more crisp. The ear is especially noticeable, with the POP2 capturing more detail in the crease of the upper ear. I am surprised with how subtle the differences were though. The original POP still produces great results. The frame rate difference was very noticeable though. The POP2 felt far more responsive when scanning due to the 25% increase in FPS. There are a few limitations of the POP2 scanner. It is not designed for very small objects, like miniatures. So if you want to scan small objects, take a look at the POP mini scanner. The POP2 can also not handle transparent or highly reflective objects. If you plan on scanning those, you can use a spray powder to coat the surface, or dust with flour to make it more scannable. In conclusion, I found the POP2 3D scanner by Revapoint to be an incredibly versatile 3D scanner. Being able to use it with a computer or connect it to your phone for mobile scanning is amazing. I do not have the tools required to validate their precision claims here in my home shop, but the resulting scans seem adequately dimensionally accurate making it easy to 3D print copies of an object. And the different modes gives you flexibility when scanning anything from objects, to people, to even pets. This is a great tool for scanning, whether you are reverse engineering parts, creating video game assets, or just scanning objects around the house. The POP2 3D scanner starts at $699 US dollars for the standard package, and the premium package with the turntable, power bank, and carrying case is an extra $100. For a 3D scanner, I think that it is a very good value for the quality of scans I was achieving. It's not unusual to see structured light scanners costing thousands of dollars, so starting at $700 is a pretty enticing price point. The original POP 3D scanner sells for about $300 less, or about 60% of the cost of the POP 2. If you are a casual 3D scanner, maybe a hobbyist who plans on only scanning objects occasionally, the original may still be a better value. But if you need the higher resolution and details, then I would highly recommend the POP2 3D Scanner. So thank you all for watching my full review of the POP2 3D Scanner by Revopoint. You can find more information in the links in the description. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. While you are here, why not check my full review of the original POP 3D Scanner? That may give you more points of comparison. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.